Hello guys. Uh, yes, I'm still alive. I kind of forgot about the channel. So, I recently got some GU50 tubes. Three of them, actually. So, the natural instinct was, of course, let's build a plasma flame generator. It's also known as a high-frequency vacuum tube Tesla coil, even though it's not really a Tesla coil because it's only uh, one oscillating circuit that has uh, feedback, like, with a top capacitor near the the breakout point so yeah it's just a big lc tank circuit just directly controlled by the tube and not um a one primary lc tank circuit feeding into a secondary lc tank circuit like in a normal vacuum tube or regular tesla coil really so you can see the setup over here there's of course the gu50 tube this one was made in the ninth uh, week of 1987, so it's a few years old. <laughs> so over here you can see the choke coil. Over here in the back you can see the uh, grid 2 resistor for the grid 2 supply, also known as a screen grid. Uh, over here over here you can see the uh, grid resistor that goes from the grid 1 to ground. And over here you can see the grid 2 uh, bypass capacitor after the uh, resistor. Mm. Over here you can see the resonance coil. And over here you can see the feedback uh, antenna thingy. Um, and here's also the capacitor that if this were to show the resonance uh, coil, this wouldn't destroy the grid of the tube. Without this capacitor, basically if, you, if the uh, discharge touches this, you will kill your tube instantly, or near instantly. Uh, this one is rated uh, 15 kilovolts. Well, it can go a bit more because it's a Soviet military uh, capacitor. So, and you obviously need a filament supply. This is uh, this brown way over here. And it goes to a filament transform over there. It supplies 12.6, uh, well, a bit over actually, 12.8 volts because it isn't loaded much. Mm, some other notable things. We have a milliamp meter that measures the total current drawn by this circuit. Over here you have my high voltage power supply. Um, I moved the tap around so you can get um, around 700 volts instead of uh, 670, which is of course good for uh, this vacuum tube circuit because you know vacuum tubes need high voltage and relatively low amperage. It's still enough to kill you, but you know. Uh, this is an it's a high voltage supply recently threw together. This is a East German uh, auto transformer. Behind it is a uh, Czech isolation transformer, some capacitors, and those bulbs back there are uh, discharge resistors activated by this switch over there. And I have a voltmeter over here that measures across one side of the capacitors because there are two capacitor banks in series, and I'm measuring the voltage across one of them because, you know, they are. Same capacitance, so I can just read the voltage of one and just multiply it by two. Um, some other important thing is, of course, a fuse. This is a one amp fast blow fuse, because uh, without the fuse, if the circuit stopped oscillating, it would blow uh, the cathode bonding wire. Because there's a inside the tube, there's a bonding wire between the, um, the the cathode cylinder in the middle and the the pin where the cathode co comes out at. This is uh, this this pin this pin right here and there's a you know thin a strip of nickel or whatever it is and if it were to stop oscillating it would draw the near maximum current maybe even over one amp and it would blow the cathode wire straight off it happened to me in my last plasma flame generator uh, or high frequency vacuum tube tesla coil killed two pl519s that way um yeah but but this tube is you know soviet military stuff it's not meant to break that easily uh, the data sheet doesn't even say how much but the maximum current for this tube is um so if i but if i look in the german ls50 data sheet which uh because the soviet tube is based on a 1940s german design and they improved it but still most of the same thing hell even the screw on knobs are compatible with the uh, Nazi German tubes and the later Soviet tubes. So the Nazi German one lists a maximum current of two two hundred fifty milliamps. Uh, I will go a bit over that as you as you will soon soon see. But 
I've seen powerful tubes, theoretically more powerful tubes, that uh, are rated to 500 milliamp continuous, but have a way thinner cathode wire. Here's the schematic. And I think, I think, I think most, um, I think the uh, first result about the circuit, uh, I think the explanation uh, is a bit wrong because uh, the person said it consists of two oscillating circuits. One is with the with the first coil and the tube itself. I don't think that is the case. I think I think this coil is there to just isolate the high high voltage, uh, well the high frequency high voltage, uh, from the resonator to the actual power supply. With it, without without this, you you will basically also mess up your grid two bias and everything, and you will get unwanted feedback which you don't want. Because, because if you know the anode tries to, to pull this, because the anode will basically try to pull the supply down, you know, when it's oscillating and this choke, uh, choke prevents that because it only lets the lower, lower frequency DC pass through and not the uh, high voltage, um, high frequency AC. So I think this is just there to isolate the, the high voltage. And you can see this because if I change this inductance, why doesn't the resonance frequency change? There are a few videos of people, and I know people have experimented uh, with that, and this inductance, uh, it just needs to be high enough to uh, isolate the tube and the high frequency side from the uh, DC and grid supply. Um, there's also a grid, uh, grid 2 bypass capacitor, and it's not strictly needed, but I added it on to keep the grid 2 voltage more stable mm, and to decouple it from the RF because the this grid resistor is also you know a coil it's it's wire around so it's it has some inductance to it and this uh, capacitor is there to um, hold the uh, grid 2 voltage basically stable uh, then we have the uh, feedback system over here so as I already mentioned we have like a loop here and there's uh, there's capacitive feedback from the loop for the actual plasma, so uh, you don't need to like have a primary tank circuit to match up your secondary. It automatically tunes itself because of the uh, capacitive feedback directly into the grid. Uh, we have of course the grid pull down resistor over here. This is basically there to um, pull the grid down when the tube is starting up. This can be in higher resistor. So the, the resonance frequency of this uh, circuit is 25 megahertz, around there. Where, when the plasma hasn't you know, formed, the resonance frequency is a bit higher because the plasma acts uh, as a capacitor and when you increase the capacitance of an LC uh, tank circuit, you lower the resonance frequency. Mm, the tube does red plate in operation. So, so let me power it on. The, the, the cathode, it's already heated, so you might be able to tell. Mm. Yeah, here you see, uh, the cathode has, has been heated because the transformer is still plugged in, as you can see. So let me, okay. So, so let me position this so you can also see the meters of the power supply. So I lower the um, East German auto transformer to zero, turn it on, my power supply is in on voltage doubler mode and the uh, discharge resistor is off of course. So when I start to notice discharge it's around 500 volts. So let me get the meter to 250. All right and this is my, my patented uh, ignition system. It's just a piece of wire, like taped to a wood pole. So you can see the, the current is around 100 milliampers uh, times 500 volts. So that's 50 watts. So, uh, you, 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 so you can see the um, anode voltage is around is 500 volts. And the um, current by the, by, drawn by the system is 100 milliamps. That's uh, 50 watts. So let me try to ignite it. You can probably not see it. I have to uh, turn off the light. Mm -hmm. As you can see, there's there's a bit of plasma there. Uh, also, also never touch the plasma. 
uh, it will kill you because it's just isolated by by this choke coil and well it it, wor it works for ac but not for dc so the current consumption has increased just a bit and i can raise the voltage as you can see and that's pretty much the highest flame i get out of it So let me take a ruler. Mm, it's around, I would say, three centimeters, which is, you know, pretty good. And the tube is uh, red plating just a bit. You know, it's a bit more on camera than it is in real life, but the flame is as tall as you can see uh, in the camera right now. Let me let me turn the final light off. So the current is uh, 275 milliampers, and the anode voltage is uh, 650. Uh, wait, 700. Sorry. So, so the the the, cur the current that was drawn by the tube was uh, 275 milliampers times. Um, the meter, the meter was showing uh, 300, 350 volts, and I have to multiply that by 2, so that's 700 volts. So the, the total dissipation, well, the to total use of the system was around, I'm not sure if you can see it. Well, it's, it's around 192.5 watts. So, you know, ne nearly 200 watts uh, for the system. Most of the power is, you know, going into the, in the flame because, you know, it was really getting hot. Uh, so you can see the little wire melted and, you know, I kind of put uh, this piece of copper around it to uh, kind of act as a small heat shield. It had some limited success. Mm -hmm. But you can see that the anode of the tube was glowing uh, pretty bright. And the grid tube of the tube was also glowing and there was also blue glow coming from the tube, which means that electrons uh, are striking uh, the glass or other materials that are causing uh, fluorescence. It's not gas or ionization or x-rays coming off the tube, but um, it's, it's electrons hitting the glass. Um, so, so, so let me power it up again. But, it, but in this case, uh, I do not shut, shut break out. There, there's some stuff going on here. I'm not sure what that's completely about, but it's fine. Oh, well, it just burns. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's, that's completely normal, right? So, so let me show this setup. Um, ignite, igniting. Come on, you see? And you, you can see that the arcing uh, pretty much stopped because, you know, I'm drawing energy from the system. You can see it's pretty bright. I think you can see. Yep. It's pretty bright, actually. And if I increase it, you know, higher, First of all, we get that again, but yeah. You know, this, this is not meant to happen. I would have to, you know, remove some of this. Uh, <laughs> well, that's a fun end. That, that's a fun end to the, um, to the high frequency vacuum tube Tesla coil or a plasma flame. Uh, well, thanks for watching. I wish everyone a great day and uh, please, please don't kill your vacuum tubes.